Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use table salt to create texture in your watercolour paintings. I'll also show you some examples of how I've used salt in my own paintings. I've got a scrap piece of watercolour paper here and I'm just going to paint a wash of Windsor Violet on it. I'll use this dark colour so that you can see the effect better. I'm just using some Arches hot press paper here. I'm actually painting on the back of a painting that didn't work out. Yes, that happens sometimes. So a little bit of Windsor Violet and I'll just paint that onto the wet paper here. Just using this dark colour so that you can see the effects that the salt creates. Okay, so that should just about do it. So I'll just wash my brush. So I'm going to have to wait a little while until some of that water absorbs into the paper. It's just way too wet at the moment. You can see the sheen on the paper there. I've found that the best time to apply the salt is just after the wash has lost its sheen and that indicates that it's beginning to dry. So I'll just wait a few minutes and I'll just keep an eye on the paper as it dries. Okay, so I think I'm at that stage now where it's time to start adding the salt. There's still a slight sheen there, but most of it's gone. So I've just got just the ordinary table salt in my hand and I just sprinkle that on. So it's all in the timing. If I wait too long, then the paper will be too dry and nothing will happen. But if I do it too quickly and the paper's too wet, again, nothing will happen. So it's just a matter of timing. So again, I have to have patience and sit and wait for the salt to do its thing. I'm just waiting for it to dry. I've got some beautiful effects happening. So with the beauty of time lapse, we can see what the salt's doing. The salt granules absorb the water and they push away the pigment and they leave a pattern of pale organic shapes that are really beautiful and just help to create texture in your work. So I'm going to leave that to dry and I'll come back and check on it later. I'll also use some natural sea salt and I'll see if there's a difference. So I'll wet another area of this piece of paper with some water. And then I'll put some more Windsor Violet on. Just a nice wet wash. Now the water is moving around on the paper there. You can see that it's much too wet to do anything with. So again I have to wait for it to absorb into the paper more. Okay, so I think I'm good to go again and I've just got some coarse sea salt crystals here and I just put those onto the wet paper and we'll see what happens with these. So it's just a waiting game now while I wait for the salt to take its effect. You've got to wait till it's completely dry before you touch it. Okay, so this is the result of the table salt. And you can see that it's made some beautiful shapes in the paint. So we'll move on down and have a look at the coarse sea salt. And you can see that these are much bigger organic shapes. They're sort of bigger and bolder. 
So let's take a look at some of my paintings and see how I've made use of this technique. I've dug out a few of my own paintings and I'll show you where I've used salt to create texture on these. Okay, this first one is a little grey fan tail and you can see that I've used the salt on its neck just around here and also on the top of the wing just here. I also put some on the top of its head so when I was painting this one I put the washes on and then I waited for them to dry a little and then I put the salt on and I used coarse sea salt for this one. So I started putting it on the darkest areas first where I'd laid the paint down the darkest. And then I put a few more on down in the lighter area as well. And this is what it looked like when it dried. And then I just started adding some detail over the top. So this is a barn owl painting and you might recognize this one that I did recently. I've posted a tutorial of this one on YouTube and you can see that I've used the salt down here. Two magpies here and it's quite obvious where I've used the salt here on the back and also here on the back of this one. It's still a little bit of salt on it actually. And this is my fox painting that I did for Skillshare. So if you've done any of my Skillshare classes, you'll remember that I used salt to create the texture on the body of the fox. And I also put some salt on its tail just to create all that lovely texture there. So after I put my washes on, I waited a little while until the sheen started to go off the paper. And then I popped on some coarse sea salt. On this flamingo here I've used it on the neck. I think that was coarse sea salt as well. On this kookaburra I used just normal table salt to create the effects that you see here. And I used normal table salt on this koala here just to create the texture in his fur. And also on this seal. I think this was just normal table salt as well. This little guy here has got quite a bit of heavy salt work on his back which has created that lovely texture through there. This little guy is a wren and I put some on his chest area. So I think with this one I didn't wait until it was quite dry enough and I wasn't extremely happy with the results but it did give me a little bit of texture so you can see that it's dry there I think I should have waited just a little bit longer with that one and this is one I did last year and I used the salt on its neck here and um, on the back here and also down on the tail feathers here Thanks guys, I hope you found that interesting. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my tutorials and I will see you in the next video. Okay, so I, oh, I'm looking at the wrong spot. I've dug out a few of my paintings where I've used salt texture.
I've dug out a few of my own paintings where I've used texture to create salt. Really 